Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here. I've been getting a lot of emails lately and talking just with a lot of people from all over the country about a common problem that I see today. Uh, and I've been seeing this in practice for years that's responsible for causing low thyroid symptoms despite having normal lab tests, okay? Uh, now, if you have had symptoms of, of uh, low thyroid, meaning that you have things like fatigue and weight gain and headaches and irritability, sleeping problems, but your blood work shows up showing that everything is fine, everything is normal, you're gonna wanna stay with us and watch this video because I'm gonna to explain to you why this could be happening, okay? It's pretty much widely accepted that there's really six major patterns of thyroid dysfunction. And really only one of these uh, patterns, only one of, of the six patterns really ever responds well to thyroid replacement. I'm gonna to talk to you about one of these patterns specifically, specifically called thyroid underconversion. Uh, and a lot of times we can have not only thyroid overconversion, which I've talked about in a past video, today we're gonna to be talking about thyroid underconversion. Okay, so if you're tired of doctors telling you that your problem is really not with your thyroid, but really deep down you suspect and you, and you just have this gut feeling that something is really definitely going on with your thyroid, what we're gonna be talking about today might just explain why you feel the way that you do, okay? Now, patients with thyroid problems often suffer terribly with just a laundry list of thyroid symptoms. And of course, when the basic thyroid panel comes back, the two main markers that are really ever looked at, uh, which is a TSH and a T4, uh, are, are so-called normal. So why does this happen? How can you feel so lousy and yet be told that you're normal? And this can be extremely frustrating, uh, but if you stay with us, I promise you're gonna understand more about what causes it and really how to identify it. So how is it possible to feel terrible uh, but have normal labs? Well, here's what you need to know. First, there, there's two types of hormones that your thyroid gland will make. It'll make something called T4, and it'll also make something called T3, okay? Now, T4 is the inactive form of thyroid hormone, meaning it really doesn't have the ability to bind to the cells of your body and then create um, a, a metabolic response. T3, on the other hand, this is the active form of thyroid hormone, and this is the hormone that's responsible for binding the cells and then creating just this huge metabolic response and responsible for all of the activity of thyroid hormone. Now, by far, your thyroid gland produces predominantly inactive T4. That means that your body is gonna to need to take this T4 and it's gonna to need to get converted into its active state or T3, okay? This is now a process called thyroid conversion. It's very, very important. Now, this conversion takes place primarily in the liver, it takes place in the kidneys, but it also takes place by the bacteria that populate and inhabit the, the, the gut lining, okay? And so what does this have to do with thyroid symptoms and normal looking labs, okay? Well, there's a negative feedback loop between your thyroid gland and an area in the brain called the pituitary gland. Um, again, this is what's gonna typically happen, okay? So the pituitary gland is going to secrete TSH and the TSH is then going to stimulate the thyroid gland to make these hormones, T4 and a little bit of T3. And so when your T4 levels drop, when your T4 levels in, in, the, in the bloodstream, in the circulatory system drop, your TSH is going to increase to tell the thyroid to produce more hormones. And the opposite's going to occur if your T4 levels start to get too high. Your TSH now is going to be suppressed. Again, remember, TSH is the, is the hormone that's being produced by the pituitary. So TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And so again here, it works both ways to try to keep your, body, your, your body's metabolic rate and balance throughout your, your, your body. So if T4 and TSH look normal on the, on the lab panels, but your doctor never looks at your T3 levels, the true problem of underconversion may never be discovered. And you may go on for years, um, indefinitely getting sicker year after year after year, um, and also increasing the likelihood of a fatal heart attack. Okay, so it's very, very important that you have your T3 levels checked. Now, this thyroid underconversion pattern is really one of the many reasons why patients with hypothyroid symptoms go undiagnosed and, in my opinion, become mismanaged. Okay, so what causes thyroid underconversion? That's really the number one question you should be asking. Well, there are certain type of inflammatory cytokines. These are, these are chemical messengers that are released from cells and they're involved typically during a stress response. And what happens typically during a stress response is that we have a down regulation of a very specific enzyme that's needed for the conversion of T4 into T3. So again, these inflammatory cytokines, this stress response is going to impair the conversion of T4 into T3. So fixing this problem really is going to require specialized lab testing to one, determine the root cause of the inflammation, 
and also the sites of where this poor conversion is taking place. Now it's also necessary to evaluate and understand this area in the brain uh, or, or this axis so to speak and, and maybe you're familiar with it, maybe it's, it's, this is new to you, it's called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis or what's called the HPA axis for short. This is really the brain and the adrenal connection. And this is a big part of that stress response that is responsible for causing poor thyroid conversion. Now, by using safe and natural interventions, we can help assist the parts of the body in normalizing that stress response and then in turn optimizing that T4 to T3 conversion. This is really where one situation where taking thyroid hormone replacement, T4 replacement hormone, Synthroid, Levothyroxine, really would not work because 90% of the time the synthetic T4 that's being prescribed can't get converted into the active form of T3 and this may have happened to you. Now another root uh, cause or, or source of, of why you may have poor thyroid uh, under conversion is really due to increased gastrointestinal permeability. This is also, may, may, you may have heard this uh, being called a leaky gut. And this can happen for a variety of different reasons, okay? This can be due to either food sensitivities, such as gluten. It could be toxins that are being produced by certain types of bacteria. So in other words, there's a lot of different causes behind this. So what are some of the other causes? Well, think about this. Have you ever been on antibiotics? Have you ever been on or do you take antacids on a regular basis that's going to reduce your stomach acid, make you more prone to an infection? Are you eating the standard American diet that's loaded with grains and loaded with sugars and loaded with bad kinds of fats, right? This problem can be addressed uh, again here by the right kind of specialized gastrointestinal lab panels that when they're done can identify not only which foods are contributing to this bacterial overgrowth, but also what be, could be contributing to the poor conversion, okay? Now I see patients every day that have histories that just scream thyroid problems, yet they continue to suffer because no one has really ever taken the time or looked at the whole picture uh, or properly investigated why this person may not be converting T4 into T3, okay? So what you need to be here is you need to be a really good investigator and that really only starts when the doctor that you're visiting or the doctor that you're seeing or the doctor that you're working with is going to spend time, and get this, the doctor has to spend time listening to his patient, okay? That doesn't really happen in, in today's day and age. So when this is found, proper testing to determine the source of this underconversion can be investigated, okay? And this is, a, this is again, a, this is a big problem that we see over and over and over again. So let's just do a quick review here. Five major points I want you to walk away with. Number one, thyroid underconversion is one pattern of thyroid disorders that are missed typically because doctors are gonna fail to order the complete thyroid panel, okay, which would include a T3. There are five other patterns that I cover in, in other videos, but each pattern is treated just a little bit differently, okay? And that's a really important distinction for you to understand. If you don't have the proper testing, you'll never know which pattern that your specific thyroid disorder is gonna fall into, okay? Number two, thyroid underconversion occurs when the body can't convert inactive T4 into its active state T3, okay? Number three, the, the, number th the, the third point that I want you to take away with today is that specialized testing is going to be required in order to understand the source of this underconversion problem. Number four, the areas of poor thyroid conversion, areas that are going to need to be investigated, are going to be the liver, the gut, the adrenal glands. Okay, and number five, and this problem is really, um, or I should say number five, this problem can in most cases be corrected naturally with dietary changes and personalized supplementation. Well, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I hope this video shed some light on why you feel the way you do. I hope it also serves as uh, just some encouragement and it gives you some answers as to why you may not be feeling good because of a poor T4 to T3 conversion problem. If you like this video, please share it with someone who's struggling and just looking for safe, natural solutions to restoring their thyroid function. Take care.